Hey everybody and welcome back for another video. In this one we're going to take a look at creating user snippets for Visual Studio Code. So Visual Studio Code over the past couple of years has become one of the hottest, most, most used editors for web development. And I say in the last couple of years because it's really just a couple of years old. This editor has really blown the developer community by storm. Every single YouTube video or course that I look at, I see more and more people using Visual Studio Code and giving their testimonies to how awesome it is. So one of the really big features of Visual Studio Code is the ability to customize it. So you can customize your key bindings for custom shortcuts, you can customize your snippets like we're going to take a look at today, and you can download extensions and plugins from all these other people to just add extra pieces of functionality to your editor and customize it exactly the way that you want it. So let's switch back over here to Visual Studio Code. And first, I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about some of the snippets that are already built into uh, VS Code. And one of those is its inclusion of something called Emmet. And actually, I'm gonna come back here to my browser to show you guys the docs for Emmet. But Emmet gives you shortcuts for uh, writing HTML and CSS, uh, and they, they advertise it as greatly improving your HTML and CSS workflow. And it's these, these dynamic snippets that allow you to generate code with little short codes, so you can generate bigger pieces of you can generate bigger pieces of code with little short codes to save yourself time and energy, and uh, really bring up your efficiency in writing HTML and CSS. So one of the most popular ones that they've got here that I use all the time, and if you've seen any of my other videos, you've probably noticed I take advantage of the Emmet shortcuts. Uh, one is the HTML5 boilerplate, which I can get by just doing an exclamation and then tabbing, and I get all of this code with only having to write the exclamation and then pressing the tab key. So this is the beauty of snippets. It's the ability to use a shortcut or a short key or a short phrase or a short couple of letters to generate a section of code that's really boilerplate, not much changes in it. Maybe there's a few different things that change within that block of code, but for the most part it's the same and you can just generate it uh, with your user snippets and go ahead and write out all that code with really not having to write it all out with only using the shortcut. So that's what we're taking a look at today. And the advantage here again is just you just improve your efficiency, uh, your speed and development and all those sort of things which make it really really a big plus for you. So the way we're going to do this is you're going to open up uh, code and then come into preferences and look for user snippets and then VS Code is going to prompt you for what language you're going to be working with. So you can write user snippets uh, specific to a certain language so JavaScript snippets versus HTML, CSS, all those kind of things. And we're going to look at doing JavaScript snippets today so I'm going to choose JavaScript and it's going to open up a javascript.json file and if you've done any customization with the with visual studio code you know that a lot of its configuration is in these json files so it's super lightweight and easy for us to customize so we want to first start by just creating a, an object here and then we'll go ahead and dive in and actually create our first snippet now snippets are basically objects with different properties that you're going to need to look at and the first one i want to start with just to get you guys uh, a basic example here here is a console log snippet. So I'm going to type in uh, console log, and this is going to be the key to the object that represents uh, the snippet itself. And this value, this key here, is really going to be the name of our snippet. So then we'll have a prefix property, and these, this is JSON, so this needs to all be in um, in quotations. And the prefix here is going to be C log. So C log is going to be the shortcut or the the abbreviation that we use to trigger this snippet, which we'll see in a second. So I, I C log here is just a shortcut for console log. And then we're going to have, uh, let's start with a description. And again, this needs to be in quotations. And we're going to say log output to console. And then lastly, we're going to have the body. And the body is going to be where we actually put the code for our snippet. So we can start here with writing out console log and then um, closing it off with a semicolon here. So when we type in C log and then press tab, this code is going to get generated. So let's save this and let's come over to, actually we'll just pull this side by side here. So we'll try a C log and notice it pops up here with this abbreviation and to the left of it is this kind of black box. So that little black box symbolizes that we're working with a snippet. And then you can see over here it's got the description, it tells you what it's doing, and then it has, uh, it displays what the actual text is going to be too. So this is going to, when I press tab, it's going to go ahead and create that code. So that's pretty simple, but there's lots of different things that we can do to customize this even further. So let's say here, usually when you write a console log, you want to type something in the log statement, right? So your first 
the first place you really want your cursor to go is inside of this console log statement. So to do that, we can use what are called tab stops, and it's basically a way to tell uh, where we want our cursor to be. So if we do a, a dollar sign and a one, that's gonna tell us that when we, when we tab and create this snippet or generate this code, we want our cursor to go to the first tab stop, which is right here. So let's try this again. Let's save this, and then we'll come over and try this again. So C log, and then I can press enter or tab. And notice my cursor goes right to these and I can start typing. And we can do this one piece better. Usually we're gonna type out a string here. So we can save this and we can start again and do a C log. And now I'm right in, inside of a string and I can start typing my message. Now one of the things that I like to do is I will print out a string and then also an object uh, beside it. So let's say I wanted to print out a string here, so that'll be my first tab stop. I can do a comma, so this is, this is actually in the code. Then I can say my second tab stop, dollar sign two, is gonna be after the comma, and that's where I'm gonna type in the object that I wanna print out. So let's save this, let's do a C log here, and a tab, and there's, uh, here is the object, is the string, and then I tab over, and it goes right to that tab stop number two, and now I can type in, my array or object, whatever the thing is that I want to print out, I can do it this way. So I've, I've got these two tab stops and I can go from one to another. All right, so the next thing we want to take a look at is one that gets a little more complicated and it's uh, a snippet for a for loop. Now for loops uh, obviously are something that we write all the time and they're slightly tedious, right? Uh, declaring your declaring your index initializing to zero while it's less than, let's say we're iterating through an array, a less than array dot length, index plus plus, all that sort of stuff. So I'm gonna copy in here another snippet for a for loop. I'm just gonna copy it in. And since this is uh, another object inside of this JSON, we need to do a comma. Oops, I only need that once. So what we've got here, we've got a, a four being the name, so it's gonna be four. The prefix is gonna be for array, so this is a for loop to iterate through an array. And then now we've got a few things that have changed on us. The first thing to realize is that body is now not just a string as it is up here, but it's actually an array of strings. So each of your lines of code needs to be wrapped uh, in a string. Let me expand this so it really makes sense here. So for each line of code that we wanna write out, we uh, we give it a, we wrap it in a string and make it part of an array. So the body is just going to be an array of strings representing the code that we want to create. Uh, so the next thing that we'll notice is now instead of having this dollar sign one syntax, now we're using dollar sign and then what looks like an ES6 like template variable in your template strings. But really what this does is it allows us to add a placeholder text for uh, where we want our cursor to be. So this is still gonna be a tab stop. So this is gonna be a tab stop. And then notice that this tab stop gets repeated here a couple of times. So it's there, there, and there, so four times. And as we edit, as we type in this index, it's gonna update each of these, and it's gonna look at these as one tab stop. So then as, we're, as we type an index and then we press tab, our next tab stop is gonna be array. And then our last tab stop or actually our second to last tab stop is gonna be element. And let's save this real quick and just take a look at what this looks at, looks like. So there's four R, and notice when I'm typing four, there's a couple of these built-in snippets for, they've got one for for loop already, they've got a for each, a for and a for of that you can use. Uh, but I'm gonna do our for array and do a tab and see how index here is highlighted four different times. And as I type here to replace that, if I just do I, then it replaces it at each of these. And then I press tab, and then in my next tab stop, this array placeholder here is gonna be what we're looking at. So I'm gonna call this just array. So let's say we've got an array called ARR, and we're iterating through it, so array.length, and I can press tab one more time. And now we're looking at the element of the array, so we're gonna, we're gonna iterate through the array, get each element, and we can call it item just to replace that and then we can do something with this. So the last thing we can do here is we're using this uh, dollar sign zero and that's a tab stop, but it's gonna be the last tab stop that we use. So if I press tab one more time, this is going to say we've used all the tab stops that we've defined. Now uh, dollar sign zero is gonna be the last position of our cursor. So if I tab one more time, it's gonna now put my cursor in the perfect position 
to go ahead and and work with item to say item uh, some property equals false or whatever we want to do so really really cool stuff so some of the things that have changed here from this first one to the second one is the ability to have multi-line and notice uh, this is an array with a string as each item and then one of the things that's uh, really important here if we didn't have these slash T's so uh, a tab this would get looking a little bit weird right usually this is indexed and then usually this is indexed or tabbed in as well so those uh, escape character T's those tabs actually put a tab in our code to format it the way that we want so that's actually really handy we want to make sure that we remember to do that so usually what I would recommend is you know you go ahead and type out what a snippet is here in JavaScript you get all your spacing and then you kind of convert that into uh, into your snippet so one of the next cool things that we can do is we can have um, we can have choices for the user to choose from so let's say that I wanted uh, the user to have a console log not necessarily a console log but a console statement that gives you a choice between uh, log error and warning so I can create a new snippet here and I can say my prefix is going to be uh, con C so this is going to be uh, console with choice console choice and then my body is going to look similar to what we have above so console dot but now I want to give choices so I can say I want a tab stop here and then a pipe symbol and in between the two pipe symbols so in between here I can comma separate my choices so I can do log warning and error I don't actually have to type in so now I've got console log or warning or error and it's gonna pop up with a choice for the user and then after that I just want to do my regular uh, next tab stop so tab stop 2 to fill in what I actually want to print out and then the last thing we need here is a description and description might actually be uh, I think it's uh, optional so you don't have to do it but um, so this is uh, logging actually not logging it's console statement with choices all right let's save that and then we'll come over and we'll try to trigger that with con C pop up here and do a tab and then notice I've got by default it chooses log because that's my first item but I can arrow down to get log warning or error so if I choose warning that's what it does and it looks like I've got a little bit of a bug here I've got a space in there that I don't want so let's uh let's get rid of that space and let's try this again so con C and then log warning looks good um, con C and air looks good as well and tab over and I get my tab stop to fill out the information so really cool stuff now this is these are really basic examples but obviously you guys can take these and do a lot of things with them um, to do more complicated code to really save yourself some time and one of the last things I want to look at is you can actually trigger snippets through a custom uh, keyboard shortcut so if I want to come into uh, code and then preferences and keyboard shortcuts and then I can open up my keybindings.json and this is where I can override all the different properties that I have and so on the left here are the default ones on the right are the ones that I've overridden uh, and I think a lot of these are just that I've got are just working with the terminal the built-in terminal in VS Code so I'm gonna come in I'm gonna just uncomment this and do a comma to make sure that looks syntactically correct and what I've got here is I'm basically saying I want to map the key sequence of command C and then L so that whole thing I want the command to then say I want to do a snippet I want to insert a snippet when I'm working in my text editor and then the arguments I need to pass to the insert snippet is the language ID so remember we're working with JavaScript that's why we've got the JavaScript.json and then the name of the uh, of the actual snippet so I think I've got uh, I need to update this so this is console log and I need to make sure that these match so console log so let me save that key binding and then I'll come back into my app.js and now I should be able to do command C and then L and I get the console log to pop up this first snippet here I've got my typing in here and then I tab over and I've got my tab stops the same way I had with just the built-in with the built-in snippet not using a specific keyboard shortcuts so keyboard shortcuts overriding them super super useful for a lot of different things as well I will probably go ahead and create a video for that one coming up soon so keep an eye out for that uh, but in the meantime working with snippets here are gonna save you a ton a ton of time and it's definitely worth putting some effort in to customizing thing, these with some of the things that you use most some of the things that uh, get really repetitive just the boilerplate code so that you can save yourself some time be more productive and get your code out faster 
So that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and like, subscribe, leave a comment, leave some feedback, reach out to me on Twitter at James Q Quick. I would love to hear you guys, but thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next video.